it's 31, we should probably get started, eh? Yeah. And we don't expect Donna here today. All right, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, welcome. Uh, so the first thing is to uh, review and approve the agenda. Gosh, I, can, I feel like the, the speakers are really on tonight. <laughs> this is very exciting. OK. Um, so the first thing is uh, just, a, 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 I think, an easy procedural switch. Um, we're going to switch items 10 and 11. Um, we're going to warn the public. Um, the public hearing first, and then. Oh yeah, the thank warning. you, thank you. Public hearing first, then approve the warning. Right. Okay. Uh, any other changes people want to make? Okay. So without objection, we'll consider the uh, agenda approved. Um, Number three, general business and appearances. Uh, so this is a time for anyone from the public to come and address the council on any item that is otherwise not on our agenda. And if anyone wishes to do so, uh, I would recommend that uh, you try to keep your comments to about two minutes or less. And we don't have Donna here, who's normally our timekeeper, but I would do that. I'm gonna, oh, 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 oh or Connor. Connor can do it. <laughs> okay. No, seeing no one? Okay, going once, going twice, all right. Uh, number four, consideration of the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All right, so uh, the bond public hearing. So my plan, we have four items to have public hearings. I've got a presentation that includes all four of them. So what I thought I'd do is just run through all four of them, and then you can take them one by one for discussion. But we'll have done the background. Yep. I'm going down here. OK. Oops. Okay, so th this is a, a public hearing in anticipation of a special election, or in fact, a special town meeting being called by the city council. The me anticipation is the meeting would be called for November 6, 2018, uh, to be held in conjunction with the state's general election already being held that day. For items, uh, specifically for bonds and charter changes, but also any items on, on a warning. It has to be, a public hearing has to be held between 30 and 40 days prior to the election, the first public hearing, and that is what this meeting is tonight. The council would then vote after the public hearings to place the items on the warning and approve the final warning wording and ballot items. A second public hearing for bonds and charter changes must be held within 10 days of the election, and the council has scheduled that for Monday, October 29th. Um, so there's also a special meeting. So that's the sort of the legal formalities. There are four uh, proposed warning articles that are being discussed tonight. The first is a $10.5 million bond for a parking garage. The second is a $16.75 million bond for uh, upgrades to the water resource recovery facility, also known as the wastewater plant or sewer plant. A petition charter change to allow non-US citizens to vote in local elections and a proposed charter change to authorize the city council to enact regulations to promote sustainability. So those are the, the four items on, on tonight's public hearing. So Article 1, this is how it will be worded. This is the required wording from the bond bank and, and from VEPSI for TIF. <laughs> it's kind of long and legalese, but this is essentially the vote for the $10.5 million um, for the uh, parking garage and authorizing use of TIF funds to, to help pay that. Uh, the project itself, where will this happen? This is the, it will happen, this is what it currently looks like, uh, be the parking uh, lot behind Capitol Plaza and Christ Church. Uh, the garage itself is proposed to look more like this. We've got some other images around. And the um, city would own, operate, and manage the parking facility using land donated by the Capitol Plaza. The construction cost, as we said, is up to 10.5 million. The reason for doing this is to implement the Economic Development Strategic Plan, which called for a new hotel, new parking, and new housing in downtown, and hopefully this will help accomplish all three. It would create uh, 160 net new parking spaces, or a 26% increase in managed parking. It would allow a new hotel and possibly new affordable housing uh, to occur. It would create, uh, we have the bike path already being built, but this would create a new ADA compliant bike path connection and park area. And the hotel, the garage certainly would not, but the hotel would 
would provide additional rooms and meals tax revenue to the city, none of which is counted on in the finances for the garage. How will this be paid for? As we said, the project cost is up to $10.5 million. That includes all the construction, design permits, environmental studies, and that kind of thing. It's a, based on current bond interest rates. It will be a 30-year bond, first four years interest only. We've assumed annual CPI interests uh, on both expenses and revenues for 2.25% for the entire term. We will be using the TIF revenue from the hotel only, uh, at least in the pro forma, for 20 years, which is the maximum allowed, uh, and that there's no change. So the, the year one TIF revenue has been held uh, steady throughout. Obviously, we expect that would increase over time. And we've also not counted any additional TIF increments or so other projects in the zone which could be used to help offset this. So in other words, we've used very conservative uh, figures. The 50000 in capital reserve fund is what is recommended uh, by uh, our parking garage consultants, and that is included as well. The revenue sources for this project are um, capital plaza permits. Uh, they will be buying 200 a year for 30 years. Uh, the TIF revenue from the plaza uh, from the new hotel will be approximately 150000 a year. Uh, other permits, we're assuming 80 permits will be sold, and we think we can do that. Uh, would be, as you see, about 19%. And then hourly users, flex users, those kinds of things, people that are in for less than full permits um, would make up the remaining source. Bill, do you want to mention there how the how that adds up to more than two hundred? Sure. Um, I, okay, yeah. <laughs> The, so the, I don't actually count in, in this the number of spaces, but uh, the council member Kruger is referring to, if you look at some of our worksheets, it shows uh, totals that add up to more than 348 spaces. And um, it's a fair question, gee, if you have 350 spaces, how come you're getting revenue from 450? The reason being is that uh, some, some spaces are used um, more than once in the course of a day. So uh, a Capitol Plaza permit, for instance, a hotel guest might come in at 5 or 6 o'clock at night, stay overnight, leave in the morning, that's still a permit that's been purchased for that space, but that unused portion of the space might either be used by another permit holder or uh, an hourly person. So typically, um, these things get you know double counted. We've assumed, I think, about a, I want to say 50% flex rate for the remaining permits, uh, although I'm, that's off the top of my head, could be wrong, but it's, it's lower than what we were advised to use because we're trying to be conservative. But, um, Yes, and, and this actually is nothing nefarious. This is actually exactly what we do in our parking lots right now. We have permits in the parking lot out back. If someone's not here that day, someone else pulls in and pays the hourly rate. So it's uh, very comparable. This happens all the time. Uh, the expenses, uh, and I still haven't been able to fix this slide, but uh, the three sources of uh, expenses, uh, the main one, of course, is debt service on the bond, the capital reserve, and the, the unlabeled one is the operational costs. Uh, that includes uh, contracts for cleaning, maintenance, uh, green greenery, electrician, that kind of thing, snow removal, uh, all the various uh, elevator maintenance. And this is again has been run through our consultants. I know at least one person in this room thinks it's too low, but we have checked it and double checked it with other garages and with people, and we feel like it's on the mark. Um, so just showing that compared to this, you can see that the the total matches. The income and the expenses match. Looking at the annual uh, projected net income, obviously in early years when the, we're only paying um, interest on the bond, our cash flow will be very positive. Then as the, the full bond comes in, uh, our annual cash flow will sink, so we will have used the reserves that we built up. And then over time, it starts building up to a more positive note. You'll notice after there's a drop after 20 to 25 years, that's when the TIF revenue falls off and it's just being funded by itself. So frequently asked questions, I'm not gonna go through all of them. There's an article in the September Bridge, there's an updated version of it sitting right over there and I'm happy to answer any of them and also all of that will be is online and the updated version will be online uh, and I'm sure there will be plenty of them here. Let's see, next. So this is just another view of the garage as it's uh, an updated design as the council has recently considered it um, with a, a higher view. And you can see some of the elevations that compared to uh, the current Capitol Plaza there in the background and the proposed new hotel. Okay, moving on. Bill, Bill excuse me. Uh, yeah. Is this an okay time for questions or should sure. we wait? Um, at our last meeting, there was a question about how the uh, Handicap access would be provided to the uh, 
to the bike path? Do we have, is that resolved yet? Yes, and um, we don't have our architect here, but we are. Um, there's going to be an access between the hotel and the garage, about 10 foot access, which will then create um, a lift. And you see the it shows a little bit of path alongside that wall, and the bike path is on the other side of that. So it'll be along there, and we're also going to create one on this side coming up to it. Again, we can, we can talk about all of these topics later, too. So, uh, Article 2 is on about the $16.75 million for the uh, wastewater water resource recovery facility. Uh, this is the, the wording that you'll see. I'm going to try to go through this, but our experts are here as well that can answer much more um, technical questions than I can. Basically, uh, this is what we call an organic to, to uh, energy project. We have an aging infrastructure that needs to be replaced. And we, th we think that over the next 10 years, regardless of whether we do this uh, organic energy project, we're going to spend as much as $13 million over the next 10 years to just fix what we have. And there's a long list of reasons why that is. Um, so the organic energy opportunity allows us to bring in revenues, create a, a new system where we can handle uh, different kinds of solids and liquid streams that we don't normally take now. Those are revenue to us, and so the, the, even though we will spend more now, we will also take in more, so the net to the rate payer will be less than, uh, than we would have. It also allows us to improve our energy consumption, or decrease, as you can see, our energy uh, use, water use, and um, as well as creating our new revenue streams. Basically, if you compare the two projects, um, you can see Basically, the projected savings, the guaranteed savings, and this also comes with a, uh, a guarantee from the company that is building this. To be honest, uh, Kurt or someone can explain this slide better than I can. Uh, but basically, you can see that we are saving in both operating costs, energy costs, and gaining in revenue. And, um, and I'm sure we will have a more robust conversation than that. Financial guarantee, uh, again, we will be guaranteed our annual revenue. Um, and our energy savings for 20 years. So they've projected certain amounts of annual revenue, certain amounts of energy savings, and, um, and certain amount of tipping fees. So if we don't make those, the, the company ESG will guarantee those amounts. Um, if anything goes on the upside, we get to keep all of that. Article 3, uh, this came in by petition, and it says it, the article will read, as, it, as you see here, shall, shall the city amend the city charter, uh, allowing non-citizen legal residents to vote? And the article itself is, this is the actual charter change. It's two pages. Um, oops. Yeah, so that's the first part. And the intent here is for uh, legal, legal uh, non-citizens that are legal residents, so people with green cards, that are living in, the United, in Montpelier that will be able to vote on local issues, so city, school, issues. There may be homeowners, taxpayers, those kinds of things. They obviously can't vote on state and federal elections, but they would be able to vote in local elections. So this is the proposal. The city council has discussed it, but this was brought in by petition and not by vote of the council. And then finally, Article 4 is, shall the city amend uh, the charter to allow uh, the city to regulate issues and activities that relate to community and environmental sustainability. We have a cur current draft that um, was approved by the city council. I understand there may be some amendments being discussed tonight, but as it stands today, this is the language that was filed with um, with the city <coughs> clerk uh, in, in within the legal time frame. So those are the four articles. Um, the upcoming dates for more information on October 15th, the good garage parking garage will have both a design review and development review board, so 5:30 and 7, two separate meetings. Uh, the second public hearing on, on all of these articles will be held on October 29, and then the city election will be held on November 6 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and early voting will start as soon as early as next week, as soon as uh, the warning is approved tonight. The ballots we send in for printing, and as soon as they're received, we'll be able to start early voting. So thanks to everyone here for participating. We look forward to answering questions on any of the four topics. And um, I assume the mayor will walk us through them in sequence. But that's a brief overview. That's all I got.
All right, thanks, Bill. Uh, so the first thing is to um, take these each one at a time. We're going to start with um, the uh, opening the public hearing. So uh, specifically regarding, um, uh, well, so the, the thing that's first on the on the list here is um, uh, the item regarding the water resource recovery facility. So we'll take that one up first. Uh, so I'm going to open the public hearing. Any comments, questions? Council or public on um, the water resource recovery facility. And we do have our um, public works staff and consultants here if there are any technical questions about that. I don't think I explained it all very well. No? Okay. Questions from the council? Feeling okay? All right. Yeah, if you have a question, come on up. Um, and if you would uh, say your name in the mic and where you fr are from. is if this bond doesn't pass, what is the expected lifespan of the current facility? Great question. Um, so this is Kurt Modica, the assistant city engineer and assistant public works director. So the, um, the lifespan of the aging infrastructure equipment is, um, is, is basically uh, met the end of its period. So if this bond um, doesn't pass, we would um, return to council with um, potentially a reduced scope. Um, but, the, but the lifespan of um, certain aspects of the equipment, it's actually exceeded what uh, most engineers would consider its lifespan. Uh, some of those pictures up there, some of the equipment that was original to the plant built in 1962. Um, so, so there has to be an upgrade. We really can't uh, can't wait one way or another. Can you talk about the number of um, complaints and um, issues that have been arising about the plant in the last year, year and a half? Uh, the only complaints that we've really had from the from the plant is occasional odor issues. Um, I would say that those are are rare. I'd say maybe, from what I've heard, um, at least at City Hall, uh, maybe. Since I've been here, maybe five complaints in 10 years. But I may not hear them all, <laughs> if um, that's what you're referring to. What do the odors indicate to you? Um, well, I think some of that is uh, related to uh, the discharge of septage, possibly. I think most of it is related to tank cleanings. So it seems most frequently when we have to open up a tank and um, clean it out with what makes, what's called a vector truck. Um, that really sort of releases the odors that are con otherwise contained in that tank. And uh, that's when, from what I've seen, when we get the most issues, most complaints. How often does that happen? Tank cleanings are, um, uh, on average, I'd say twice a year. Okay. But I mean, it's a wastewater plant. There's going to be some odors with it. There's no, I don't think there's really any way around that. but. Um, as far as actual complaints received at City Hall, we're fairly I'd just like frequent. to say, as somebody living on Lower State Street, um, in the last year and a half or two years, there is odor all year long, which never happened before. I, I did issue, I did send in several complaints about the odors, but it's almost nonstop um, in <coughs> and intensity. So I'm really concerned about um, how much longer we have if the bond doesn't go through. Yeah, I don't think um, odor issues are a reflection of um, the plant's operation uh, ability to treat wastewater. We really measure that through um, the concentrations of what's leaving the plant. Um, you know, did you s uh, send those complaints to the to the wastewater plant directly, or where, where were those directed? I called them in. To the wastewater plant. Okay, I just may not have gotten passed along to City Hall, but. Um, so the increase in odor across the year doesn't mean really anything? It's not related to how the plant's uh, necessarily functioning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So not addressing the odor complaint specifically, but the point is is that this we do need to upgrade our plant. It is really beyond its useful life. And so in evaluating the options, um, although one is less expensive, the net of the two, 
uh, is actually better for us to do the more expanded project because of the revenue. It also has more environmental benefits. So that was the reason the staff recommended okay. the option that we're pursuing. Uh, Steve Whitaker, Montpelier. The, uh, the new plant, will it prevent overflow releases of raw sewage into the Winooski River going forward? We've had quite a number of those, I understand. And will this salt resolve that problem? Uh, no, that's an, that, um, the overflow issue is related to the collection system, not the treatment plant. So it will not have any effect on the level of overflows. We do have uh, a roof drain study grant underway right now that we're looking at. And we've also done um, independent smoke testing. We recently purchased a smoke testing machine uh, for Public Works. And we've identified several very large stormwater contributors into the sanitary sewer system. Um, and we'll be addressing those uh, probably next summer. So, so we do have um, work in progress to reduce uh, and hopefully very soon eliminate overflows, but it's not related to this project. Okay, so all of those other mitigation of mitigation projects to eventually prevent the overflows are not are going to be additional expense not included in this bond that's right we're hoping a lot of this work um, we can do in-house so it will not be major expense we also are required under our wastewater permit to develop a long-term plan to resolve the CSO issue um, which we'll be um, putting together here this uh, this winter uh, well, like I said, I think a lot of these are uh, storm drains that are piped right into the sanitary sewer system that uh, our crews have the equipment and um, capabilities to do that in-house. So I think we're going to be starting you know, to really um, tackle that issue without a major cost up front. There is going to be some cost to it, and some of that is already um, laid out in our water sewer master plan. We do have funding um, already planned for in that plan to address the CSO issue. But, but this is not an optional. The water treatment plant, water waste treatment, sewer treatment plant is not an optional. It's you're running at end of life of the capacity that we have. Of the useful life of equipment that's there, yes. And in terms of degradation to the, the, the well, we, we absolutely take seriously the overflows and are addressing it. You know, having a, a catastrophic failure at the, at the wastewater plant would be far worse than the occasional overflow so it's much more important to treat the daily flow all the time every day um, so can you speak to the wisdom of putting a 17 and a half million dollar bond for a mandatory expense up against a 10 million ten and a half million dollar optional bond for a parking garage on the same ballot what how, how are you going to proceed if the garage passes and the treatment plant doesn't well like I said we would come back um, with another scope of work for the wastewater plant upgrade. I can't speak to uh, putting the, the two on the same part. ballot. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not why I'm up here. But. I didn't speak. I meant to put you on the spot, but didn't expect an answer. <laughs> Simply point out with regard to that question that the funding avail the funding that's funding the parking structure, potential parking structure, is not available for use for anything else. It comes strictly from the revenues from the garage and from the TIF from the hotel, so we would not. It's not like we can take that ten million and spend it on something else. This is, this is strictly from, the whereas the sewer plan is funded by the, um, sewer users, and sewer user rates. Further questions? All right. I guess we're going to close the public hearing for the. <clears throat> water resource recovery facility bond uh, and we're going to move on to the specifically the parking garage so I'm going to open the public hearing um, I did I did just close the one I did okay I just did that okay <laughs> thank you uh, all right so we're going to open the public hearing for the parking garage if there are questions uh, or comments from the public or counselors now's a good time Hi, good evening. My name is Sarah DeFelice and I'm the owner of Bailey Road across the street. I am also the president of the Montpelier Business Association, so I um, thought it was important for me to come here today and share the thoughts, and I am speaking for the business community. We had a meeting this morning and talked about this issue. Um, we have meetings monthly, and um, we've had representation from the Bashar family and MMR speaking about the parking garage for the last four to five months. So um, the business community feels 
fully informed and we've been able to ask questions within our small group and talk about it as business owners and how that would affect our business. And we don't agree wholeheartedly on a lot of things, but uh, I asked the question today, do we unanimously agree on this parking structure? And we do. So I hope that you take in consideration that out of the 30 people that attended the meeting today and who have attended the meetings in the past, this is something that we are fully behind. Um, and if you need anything from the business community to help move this forward, we are here and ready to go. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roberta Garland. I live in Montpelier. Um, I'm just wondering if somebody could speak to that note about possible affordable housing as part of the project. Sure. Um, Christchurch is located right next door, and they are considering um, possibly doing afford an affordable housing project next two or three years in, in behind their church. And we've been in contact with them. I mean, it's really dependent on many things, including external funding. But we've tried to develop the project in a way so theirs can succeed, and then we would provide them. We've already reached an agreement with them about parking in this garage should that project be successful. So hopefully it will allow that to occur. We're also, as you know, develop already building affordable housing on the other side of the garage at One Taylor. Thanks. I had one more question that came to mind. How, how would the parking garage affect the water overflow issue? Is the that water good? overflow? Like the combined storm water? Like we storm were just water. talking about? Yeah, the storm water overflow. Is that, would that play a role at all? With the so I'm not an expert on this, but I'll answer it as best I can. First of all, the, the, no more or less storm water is going to fall from the sky, regardless of whether, whether a, a garage is present. And most of that land, not all, but most of the land that's on is currently um, asphalt and has no real treatment, so it just already sheds off into the river. The garage will also be impervious. It will have some treatment systems in it to collect what runs down through the building and cleanse it. So while they'll, it's probably not going to reduce the amount of flow to the river, it will probably be cleaner. There's also going to be some more green space around the garage to correct, connect, collect some. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is going to be a st full stormwater treatment facility, but it should improve uh, over the existing circumstance. At least that's the design. That's our goal. Hi, I'm Eve Jacobs Carnahan. I live on Saban Street. So I have um, two questions. So my first. You need to get right on top of the microphone. Yeah. It's real close to us. It's, it's too tall. You can sit oh. here too if you'd like. You can also take it out too. You want to just hold it? Okay, I'll hold it because because actually I want to ask the. So I want to ask a question about the wall that's shown there um, that yeah. is slices through the green space and seems to be right next to the bike path. Um, it seems as if it makes a barrier so that you wouldn't be able to get from the bike path through to downtown through that section. And it seems that it would make it a very unfriendly section of um, multi-use paths. So are there any open skins in it? Is it necessary? Is there some explanation for that? Great question. So I'll do the best I can. I'm not the architect. Um, the wall has to do with the elevations and flood. They're trying to create this at a low level so flood waters can come through. But the connection to the bike path would actually be on the other side of the wall in the far end of the garage coming up behind it. And the bike path will be on this side of the wall. will still connect to Main Street so you'll be able to come through. And on the, heat, the, the, the side facing you, there will be a connection coming down and going up to the path up above the wall. So it will be fully accessible to, from both sides. But there'll still be a wall as you're riding or walking along that path. But you'll be up on the path. So you're saying the path is higher than yes, the wall? Yes, the path will be up higher. The path is actually on, you can see the railroad tracks there. The path there is on the other side of the railroad tracks. It only comes through down here toward the bottom of the lot. It's, the path isn't drawn in, so it's harder to see. But So the path isn't even on that? That's correct. Okay. 
path, the corner of the path would be right near the corner of the bike path would be like right here. Yeah. Yep. And if I may add, um, uh, we shouldn't be crossing the railroad tracks uh, that are shown there anyway. And so actually having a wall there um, helps prevent people from um, crossing where they shouldn't. So. Right. I, I just want to say, I think that Eve, that it was very confusing because the crossing isn't drawn on there. And I had similar concerns when I first saw this, but it's just that the crossing isn't drawn, that there is actually a crossing plan, but it's not shown on there. And we are, we're getting that added okay. on for future. Okay, so um, my second question has to do with um, the overall planning of creating a very large parking garage that seems, as far as the public is concerned, that any public discussion has only come up since August. It's very, very quick. Um, I am cons so I have served on the pedestrian committee for several years. I'm it doesn't exist anymore. There's a different kind of committee. So I'm very concerned about um, how the downtown works for pedestrians and people on bicycles and people who are not using cars. And on the pedestrian committee, we talked a lot about things like public transportation, um, attractive downtown spaces where there is a friendly place to walk to, a park, a place to sit. Um, and those are the kinds of things that we talked about as ways to discourage people from using cars and to move in the direction of making the downtown a friendly place and an accessible, easy place for people to get to. So we talked about in, um, adding sidewalks in places where there are gaps in the city, and we created a big map, and there's still a lot of places where there aren't sidewalks. We continually have talked about maintaining sidewalks in the winter. Um, so my general question is, if we spend um, so, so it's sort of twofold. What kind of planning has gone into how this garage will fit into the whole picture of all of the things that would can be done in the city to decrease car use and increase the livability friendliness of um, the downtown for people who are not using cars? And what does the spending of $10 million in bond money do to the ability to have funds to add the sidewalks that are missing in the gaps to, to create public transportation. Um, those are my big concerns, and I haven't heard them addressed in any meetings. Do you want to take a shot? Uh, well, I'll certainly talk about the funding aspect, okay. and I can try to talk about the planning aspect, although the council may want to weigh in on that as well. Um, start with your funding question. We have drastically ramped up the amount of funding for sidewalks and infrastructure over the last five or six years. And we have a pretty extensive plan moving forward. So there's, I think, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars now for sidewalks in the next several years. So I think we feel like we've got a pretty good handle on the funding for sidewalks, both maintenance and new. Um, with regard to the circulation here, the plan around this area was always the bike path and the bike path connection with the new bridge coming in. That was the main bike and ped circulation plan <laughs> that is still happening going forward. This is, and as we just talked about, there will be connections to it here. Um, it's, you know, I think the with regard to, uh, you know, we can, I'm sure there'll be healthy debate over whether this is good or bad for cars, but it's basically replacing what is existing surface parking with parking. It's not taking anything out of circulation or, or that. So I think that's, fr from a staff perspective, I think that's what we're looking at. I mean, the council may want to talk about it from a policy perspective. But um, I guess I would just add that um, something that various council members have uh, added to the conversation is that, you know, we certainly hope that, you know, with the addition of, uh, I mean, this is a constitutes a net growth of uh, available parking spaces um, in Montpelier that that may open up um, some other possibilities for uh, for our, our um, on-street parking as well as um, uh, potentials for parklets uh, and and thinking about like how bikes uh, have opportunities on street as well um, so you know I, I'm already thinking about like the the parklets that we might be able to um, put in in coming years and and this would certainly help one other piece of that too just I forgot is Council has already voted to move forward with a Confluence Park development too on the one Taylor piece. Um, and 
as a result of this and a good suggestion, we were able to reduce six parking spaces in one tailor to create 1,500 or so more square feet. I mean, realize it's not awesome, but it's better than it was. And um, there will be green space behind this building that is currently parking, so that will be connected in. So on that point, um, as you know, I had sent an email asking whether you could reduce not six parking spaces at the, out of the 45 that are being created at One Taylor Street, but a large number, like perhaps 30 of them, so that the park that's being created there is instead of being a teeny, teeny, tiny triangle park, could actually be a good usable park. So I would really urge the council to be looking much more seriously and immediately at finding ways to reduce, to, to create more pedestrian park-like places immediately as part of this project so that you're presenting it to the public as creating a parking garage and creating, um, doing the thing that you're saying is hypothetically in the long term, which is to reduce parking other places so that you're creating friendly street spaces. Um, I have another, it doesn't, I didn't understand or hear how this would impact, um, how using $10 million of bond money impacts the ability to use bond money for um, other kinds of projects in the future that might have to do with public transportation um, or um, so the city, things. The city is well within its legal bond limits uh, in terms of, so it wouldn't really, I mean, I suppose at some point if we spent hundreds of millions of dollars, we would we would hit that limit, but we're far, far from it. We also have a bond policy, a debt limit policy, and we're staying within that with this as well. And the as and that includes the wastewater plant as well, because that's also a large bond uh, that affects our, our debt limit. But because it's based on total revenues, there's also additional revenues coming in from both things. So we're staying within our ratios and percentages there, so we still would be able to bond in the future if needed. And then my last question is, um, I understand there hasn't been a traffic study done yet for this garage, so there isn't any um, information on how it would impact downtown traffic. When will that be done? Will it be before we have to vote on it? It's being done now. It has to be presented as part of the de development review bo board process. So does that so mean it'll be process. available before October 15th? I don't know. So uh, it should be. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a nod from Tom McArdle. So. so will that be available to the public? Of course. Thank you. Uh, you. Some of you have heard some of these comments before, but I'm going to, they're further uh, enhanced and informed. Um, the lack of transparency of the driving force here, the request at the last meeting for access to the Hilton correspondence, which threatens to uh, terminate the franchise if we don't do this right now. Uh, there was discussion at the last city council meeting. I understood you were gonna ask for that document. I got a response that we don't have it, we're not gonna ask for it. Uh, I think this board needs to vote to request that document. Uh, in the interest of transparency, you have a private developer asking for public assistance in the, ten, in the millions of dollars of scale, and we don't really know whether this is a now or never proposition. Uh, if indeed that document doesn't exist or it doesn't say what it's purported to say, then we've been negotiating in bad faith and we've got a whole other problem on our hands. So I'm asking you to take seriously the need to see that and release a redacted form of that document because for us to be forced to make a decision in the absence of What's really driving this? We're cutting corners left and right with planning and design, and we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Uh, take a step back. Enough said on that. I hope Actually, you'll take we can, some we can respond to that. You want to respond to that? Mm -hmm. So um, as a result of your questioning and also our own questioning, we did actually verify that document. We do not have a copy of it. We did. We followed the same practice we did with their financial records as we had White and Burke, our consultant, review it for us and provide us the feedback. It's about a 400-page document. It has a lot of pr proprietary information in it, but they confirmed to us that the schedule that we are on is what is required by the document. But White and Burke is a hired gun bond for us. tip consultant. <laughs> for us. Right. But 
Well, they, they were our TIF consultant, but they're also our project consultant in the garage as well, two separate. But pieces. you're aware of the auditor's report and the JFO report that says this consultant industrial complex is self-serving because they get paid when these projects Well, actually, th that be that as it may, we asked them to review a document and provide us information about it, and they did. The same as they did so with... So they put in writing that Hilton is threatening to revoke the franchise if they didn't say that they said that the schedule that we are following is consistent with that the requirements of that agreement that could mean anything so my point is that we are being backed against a wall with poor planning and shortcuts uh, the perspective drawings I've called this to some of your attention the perspective drawings are misrepresenting the stand in front of the microphone please I am I'm going to take the poster back over the microphone uh, I point out that our zoning regs require uh, wa emphasis on walkability and on interconnection and extension of existing roads and trails. And this runs contrary to that in numerous ways. The, the, uh, the railroad bridge actually comes... There's a better view of it right behind you, Steve. That's, that one's even more rip misrepresenting because this, this bridge is about 25 feet and this is a 50 foot garage. So how is it so much lower than a 25 foot railroad bridge? Because the bridge is elevated and the garage is sunk down to a lower. We reviewed, you raised that issue at the zoning meeting the other night. We reviewed that with our architect and he said he's extremely confident. I mean, we're happy to float the balloons, but he's extremely confident with the dimensions that are shown there. Fair enough. Garage shows itself 10 foot below the height of the railroad bridge trestle, which is 25 feet above the height, the lowest level of the garage. So my point is, these are things that should have been measured and confirmed and verified before you're asking people to vote $10 million. Um, we believe they have been. We understand that you don't. So the two, year 2000 capital master plan in, in the section, I think it's page 14 to 18, refers to the Winooski River Parkway. And it puts particular emphasis on moving parking away from the river and opening up the river for walking, recreation, and arts. This is running flat contrary to that. You're, po you're putting the corner of a four-story, 50-foot tall garage within 20 feet of the riverbank of the first branch. That it's totally anathema to goals that have been in, in designs that have been done for the last 18 years. So you're uh, similarly the Montpelier Sustainable Montpelier. You're aware, right, that the bike path actually goes along the length of the river till it crosses over. That was in direct response to that response the report that you're referring to. Well, you're. you're you're bringing me to a comment that I had further down, is that the, the, the city is acting in the role of a promoter and a developer, and the webpage even that's describing this project and this handout that you're giving out today is not talking about the downsides of this. What could go wrong? Who's going to pay for it if and when it does? You know, I think the, we've been clear about that, that if it goes wrong, that the city's bondholders are, would have to pay for it. It's not just paying for it, it's, it's the impact on traffic and on ruining the city's walkability. You know, we're, we're basically putting, to get to the path between the hotel from, and the parking structure is a 40 foot tall canyon, only 10 feet wide. People don't want to walk through those kinds of dark canyons, you know, not to mention the plowing and maintenance. I just want to be mindful of the time oh, as, yes, as well. Just in terms of sure if you want Fair to enough. cut me off I'll, I'll i'll take that i'll um, give you a couple more minutes how about that <coughs> so the traffic study okay. we've we've fair? seen three versions we've seen trip generation estimates we've seen traffic reports we've seen traffic studies we are at a real risk that a traffic study for this project is going to be short shrift and inadequate the one of the uh, local Credible architect spoke at the Development Review Board and said these garages have only worked where they've been on a street. This is not on a street. This is at the back corner of a parking lot of a 
of a, we're not sure whether it's going to an easement or a right of way. So it, if indeed this needs to be on a street, you're going to be forced to either turn the L-shaped drive through Capitol Plaza Bashar's land into a street, <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> what force you have. <laughs> Or you're going to have to take the Haney lot and turn that into a street. Either one is going to have massive cost implications and is going to take over a lot of perpendicular parking on both of those locations, which is no longer going to support the economics of your parking spaces. You understand that? If you have to take a street out to North, through Northfield Savings Bank and over to Taylor, that means all those perpendicular spots on that narrow... It doesn't necessarily mean that. I, pre I appreciate that that's your opinion. You, but that you doesn't have one necessarily... It's okay. Mean you have one more minute. Okay, well, I can tell you're really open to hearing I'm informed just, testimony, so I'll leave it at that. No, actually, Steve, I, I'm open to having accurate testimony, and you did just actually quote someone inaccurately from the meeting the other night. So if you want to quote them accurately, that would be fine. What Sandy Vitchum said was, in my opinion, these sometimes work best when they're on streets. She didn't say, as an architect, these only work on streets. I didn't say they only. So I will have to go back and review the recording, but if you want to get into mincing words. No, I'm just saying. So I have made requests. In fact, as of 5 o'clock today, I still hadn't received the contract for the traffic study. So we're in, the city is in violation of law unless it happens to be on the key that I got when I got to the meeting. One hopes. Thank you. Further comments? Hi, Dan Groberg, director of the Montpelier Alive. Um, I'd like to read a couple comments that I received from business owners who were not able to be here tonight. Um, both of whom are highly respected um, entrepreneurs and, and business owners in this community for a long time. Uh, Bob Watson, the owner of Capital Ground, said, I want to add my full support of the project. I have served on various boards and committees over the past 25 years. Parking has been a topic of discussion for all of that time, and it's a perennial issue in the downtown. We're at a point where we have an opportunity to make it happen. I stand fully behind the proposal. I believe the sentiment is shared with, by most of my downtown business community as well as the residents of Montpelier, the time is now. I'd also like to share comments from Eric Bagelstone that were submitted to City Council last week. Uh, for too long, almost 30 years now, I have sat in meeting after meeting regardless of the topic and the subject of the lack of parking in downtown Montpelier comes up. The problem is nobody until now has even proposed a concrete solution. We need to have a place in the core downtown where people can park. In this particular case, by doing so, it will allow further development of a hotel that is definitely needed. The possibility of an additional 80 to 100 people enjoying our downtown on any given night benefits not just the hotel owners, but the shops, restaurants, and events that happen in our city. And I'd really like to emphasize that last point. Um, this parking garage enables, not only does it provide tremendous benefit by itself that is mostly being paid for, by a private entity. So the, the talk of this being a giveaway by the city, um, I think is just not accurate. If anything, we're presented with an opportunity where a private entity has offered to pay for the majority of a project over 30 years that will have tremendous public benefit. But this project will also enable a hotel that will bring 30,000 visitors a year to Montpelier. That's 30,000 meals eaten in downtown restaurants, 30,000 shoppers in our downtown stores. We talk a lot about um, you know, uh, affordability in Montpelier, and I, I think if we want to bring more tax revenue, if we want to bring more economic development, um, more benefits to the public, this is a win-win-win situation. We've been talking about this for 30 years, and we're presented with a tremendous opportunity. So I thank the City Council for, for, for taking this opportunity, and I hope the public will join in supporting the bond vote. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. My name is Yvonne Bob. I own Global Gifts downtown in Montpelier. I live and work in town and rarely use my car. My car probably sits in my driveway most of the week. I, prob I probably usually only take it out sun Sundays to go grocery shopping. Um, so I um, appreciate that this is a walkable downtown, but if we want to have a vital downtown, we need we need more development, we need more tourists 
to support the restaurants and the businesses. Sadly, I could not make it in my business if it weren't for the tourists. Um, at certain parts of the year, um, my business would be dead if it weren't for people coming from out of town. People coming from out of town need a place to stay, and they're driving. They're not taking, most of them are not taking the train to Montpelier. We need more parking, and we need more places for people to stay. So I support the hotel, I support the parking garage, because parking is a perennial issue. I hear it from customers frequently during the week um, that, oh, I was going to stop the other day, but there was no parking. There was no place to park. Um, so increasing the parking in downtown by 26 percent sounds huge to me. And as Eric from Capital Stationers said, um, we've been talking about this for decades, and finally there's a serious proposal where we can um, make a difference and have an impact um, on the parking. So I think um, this is a great opportunity. Uh, I hope we don't let it pass by. Thank you. Ma'am, would you mind repeating your name for the record? Sorry? It's Yvonne. Sorry. You're good. Okay. Thanks. I got it. <coughs> All right, further comments. Okay, any comments from just, counselors? Yes. I just want to apologize to Steve. Um, we disagree on this, but I shouldn't have gone after you personally. That was a mistake on my part, and I, I apologize publicly to you. Oh, more comments. Okay. Can I trade that for a few more minutes? It's <laughs> <laughs> up to the mayor. Hi. Whoops, can you hear me? There we go. Um, Elizabeth Parker. And um, so I've been following everything, and I just want to compliment you all. It's taken a lot of time on so many people's uh, so many people have put a lot of time into this, and I appreciate that. And I've just been watching how the drawings have been evolving. Um, there have been so many positive responses to, um, you know, how this building is going, how the garage is going to look. Um, and there have been some, there are some challenges, and I don't see, I didn't bring my maps. I can't believe I'm here without my maps. Oh, here, this will work. <laughs> um, as of Monday night, um, I was talking with the architect about the ramp that potentially might run up the north side of the building after the opening uh, that allows cars to leave. Um, and, I, and that would hopefully be a handicap grade that would start and go up to the entrance of the garage. And what I understood at that point was that that path was still under negotiation because of the fact that it hadn't been concretized with Christ Church. And I just wondered whether that path exists that goes up the side of the back oh, side. Okay. I think you're right. I think we're still talking about that. Okay. That's just one question. I'm hoping that that happens. Um, and then upon looking at the internal plans, uh, somehow the handicapped parking ended up on all floors uh, over this um, emergency exit instead of over close to the um, elevator. So I think that's a quick fix, but I'm just going to point it out to you all. Um, and then the other point I wanted to make, and I know you're still in negotiations with the farmer's market, but the idea of having gates not only at the emergency exit, but potentially somewhere along here to allow the use of the lower level for public activities at various times, perhaps the farmer's market, we don't know, is uh, something that I'm hoping we might be able to add in. And finally, my last point is that now, in order to come and get up onto the bike path, you would have to go around and in between the hotel and the, um, and the garage. And I'm hoping, and I was, I'm, I've got my little hot spot going, and I'm listening to you all in the beginning, and the first, um, the first question. And I wasn't sure if I heard correctly, Bill, that there is going to be some sort of an access from this side That's up correct. that will allow you to get up to the bike path. Okay, because I haven't seen that yet in any of the drawings, so I look forward to seeing that. Good. That's all I wanted to comment. Thank you. I'll put this back over here. Anything further? Yeah. Good evening. My name is William Moore. I'm the president and CEO of the Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce, and I'm happy to come here tonight as a resident of Montpelier 
to offer the chamber support for the project. Uh, we think that it's an important asset for the city to have. It's an important investment for the city to be making. We think it's going to be an important part of our overall economic structure. Uh, our committees have reviewed the process uh, considerably through our, we've got a process that we use to develop public policy positions and it has come through the board of directors that we do support this wholeheartedly. Uh, you know, in the, in the view of transparency, the developers, the project, our members of the chamber, uh, we are here because we believe this is a program that is very valuable for the city. The city's been begging for additional parking. We think this is one way to get through to the end of that. It's part of the st uh, st strategic master plan. City's master plan uh, has identified the site as the appropriate place. We think now is the time to do it, and we strongly encourage you to go forward with the uh, bond vote and to encourage all the citizens of Montpelier to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Okay. Now, uh, if anybody had more that they wanted to say, I would recommend that you um, send it to us in writing because we were always uh, willing to read more um, that people have to say. All right, so moving on. I'm going to close this public hearing unless anybody else has other things. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to close that public hearing and move on to the uh, charter amendments. Um, um, let's deal with the non-citizen voting one first. Is that okay? Can we do that? Sure. Unless um, I don't know if one of the petitioners is here um, to present it. Your Robert is here. So I think since it came by petition, um, should we do the that? petitioner should probably present and yeah, explain uh, it. I guess we, we could. That is a switching of the order. I wonder, like, do you all care? If we, do you think that's... I think that's fine. Okay. So I guess we'll, we'll uh, move on to the non-citizen uh, voting uh, amendment. So, um, sorry, what was the name that you said? I think it's Roberta. Oh, right? Roberta. Roberta Garland. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to come up and, and talk about this. Uh, and for those that are wondering about this, this, this did come to us by petition. It's not initiated by any city of staff or council, so it seems appropriate. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at this. She's and actually, I don't know that we need to um, necessarily, unless you have things that you want to say, we could just open the public hearing and then have, um, give people an opportunity to ask questions. Do you, do you, would you like to um, take a few minutes to talk about this? Well, I can take a couple of minutes and say okay. something. Um, so this came about because no, there was a, a interest in um, expanding voting rights in Montpelier to um, people who are living in the country legally but are not U.S. citizens and therefore don't, haven't had the right to vote. Um, these are folks who live in Montpelier, um, pay taxes, um, involved in Montpelier activities, maybe may have be putting their kids through school here, although that doesn't have anything to do with this, but they are invested in the community, but haven't had any say. Um, we collected, we needed 300 signatures to um, put, the, put it forward onto the ballot, and we actually got 430 signatures um, by the time you know, the signatures had to be um, brought in. So, Great. All right, any questions from the council? I, I just want to thank you for doing all that work, mm -hmm. um, organizing and collecting signatures. Any questions from the public? I think, did I put both the public here? Okay, oh gosh. I'm a little, a little slow today. So I'm opening the public hearing. Uh, so if there are uh, comments or questions from the public. Yvonne, Bob, I have a, just a quick comment. You said whether the ki their <coughs> kids are going to school here is not relevant. They can vote on the school budget. That's very relevant. No, 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 they won't be able to. That would be a separate issue altogether because the school board is made up of Montpelier and Roxbury uh, folks. And so because so Roxbury is part of it, then they cannot right. vote on right? the yeah. school budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Saying, that's right. Great question, though. <laughs> Any further questions or comments? Okay, well I guess we're gonna close the public hearing then. Thank you so much. All right, moving right along. 
Uh, all right, so the la uh, last one here, uh, the Charter Change Amendment regarding sustainability. Um, so uh, I guess I want to just uh, frame this uh, uh, here a bit, um, which is to say that so we had started with this um, uh, goal from the City Council to ban plastic bags. Uh, we asked, we, we don't have jurisdiction to do that, so we asked our lawyer to write some language um, that would be t uh, potentially be a charter change that would allow us to, to do that. Uh, and uh, what we got was quite broad and it's very exciting, it's very interesting. Um, and uh, since then, um, I mean, we at the last meeting, we talked about taking out some of the language from the original um, and <clears throat> so I, I would just want you to know, I, um, uh, well, yeah, so we talked about taking some language um, out of the original, um, sort of slimming it down a little bit, making it a little, at least a little bit more narrow, but it kept uh, this energy efficiency piece uh, as well. That's sort of at the end of that language. Um, so I, I actually did call the lawyer this morning to say, um, hey, is that original language that's a slimmed down version um, that, you know, doesn't have the, um, uh, the parts about wildlife or, what, or whatnot um, uh, in it, is, would that work? And uh, he actually, um, th this was a big deal for me, he actually said that he would not endorse that language um, currently and that he had actually provided to us some alternate language that was um, really specific to uh, banning plastic bags, and not just plastic bags, but any single-use plastics. Um, but it did not, I mean, the part that was dear to my heart <laughs> is about energy efficiency, and uh, this language would not include that. And so um, uh, one hypothesis is that if we went with the very broad language, that uh, would be a quite a big risk and uh, might not like we might lose both of those things we might lose both the plastics and the energy efficiency um, and that I, I I would rather this is me I don't want to take that risk um, uh, and especially when we might have the opportunity to have another go at some charter revision language for March. So if, if the council cares about energy efficiency, one hypothesis is that we could um, uh, aim for some charter revision language specifically about uh, creating ordinances regarding energy efficiency for March instead of trying to package them together now. Um, and this. I, I mean, I've talked with a, a few of you, and you uh, might know, like, I've really wrestled with, like, what is the best solution here, because, um, I, yeah, because I, I care deeply about both of these things. So um, having said that, um, I just wanted to frame up where, where I thought we were at, because uh, we do have this other language. Did we print out enough copies for the public? For some. Okay. For Steve. I wasn't sure whether you were actually going to get to it or not, but we oh, have some extra. Okay. So I just want you to know that there's this other language exists, That's for you. Uh, and um, so that is also on the table. So we could, I, I guess our choices are really, do we want to go with the uh, either some form of the original language, slimmed down or not, um, or this, um, the alternative language? Connor. So, Mayor, I, I think I went into this thinking the, the broader the better. Um, you know, but I took some time to reflect the last few weeks here. Uh, and to me, it comes down to three things. Um, would it pass in November? Would it get through the legislative process for a charter change? And then would it hold up in court legally? Mm -hmm. um, so we sort of went into this with the intention, we want to ban plastic bags. I very much want to do that. Um, but I think I would be willing to limit the scope in this case um, with the understanding that we would pay close attention to um, the energy efficiency piece, potentially for a ballot item in March. So that's where I'm at. I looked at the um, language proposed by the attorney there. I, I would actually strike one word from that, too. It t talks about taxing, um, single-use plastics. Um, I believe there could be some risk associated with uh, having the word tax in there and that it might open it up to the uh, House Ways and Means or Senate Finance Committee. Uh, which would further clog it up through the process up at the state house there. Um, I, don't, I don't want to tax plastic bags. I would want to ban plastic bags. Um, so I'd recommend just taking the word tax out of that. Other thoughts? 
uh, Ashley, then Jack. So I, I, I guess I'm going to label plan A the first set of language that we received as the proposal. Plan B is the sort of pared down version and plan C is what we have tonight. Um, I, I favor the pared down original version, so plan B. Um, the legislature has the discretion, and I realize the exposure that that creates, but the legislature can narrow or tailor whatever language we um, submit to them. Uh, and I think that it's our role as counselors to be bold and to make big asks. Um, and, uh, you know, there's risk associated with all of that. Um, but to me, sort of waiting and seeing uh, isn't really the answer anymore. The last few weeks in particular, I've just been rage filled um, at everything that is happening in our country. Uh, and so I'm, I am supportive of plan B. Um, I really feel strongly that if the legislature is going to be the ones to say no, make them be the ones to say no. I, I don't think that, I'm not one to hedge my bets um, on, on things like this that sort of impact the future of everyone uh, on the fact that there may be some people who, who disagree with us. I'd rather get them on the record as saying that they aren't willing to support this for whatever reason. Um, so I, I favor the pared down original language. Fair enough. First off, have we opened the public hearing? No. <laughs> Let's do that right now. So I'm going to officially open the public hearing about this charter change language. We're going to continue to take some comments from counselors, and then we'll go to the public. Okay. <laughs> um, having reviewed this, um, I've, uh, <clears throat> I, I came into this thinking from the very beginning, even before I was on the council, uh, talking to Connor Casey, saying, we get on there, we're going to, ban plastic bags. And that's one of the first things we talked about as our legislative agenda here. And I, I think that is very important uh, here in, in Montpelier to do that. Um, the other uh, important thing for me is that as an attorney, I think it's important to listen to our attorney's advice. Um, I think everybody should take their lawyer's advice when they get it. Um, I think that uh, we can have a very clear uh, charter uh, language that goes right to the point of plastic bags and other single-use plastics. It gives us some time to uh, Get, uh, get a much more focused uh, language on energy conservation and, and efficiency, which I think are very, very important, and uh, talk about what, uh, what proposals or, uh, or programs we would develop using uh, the authority that the charter would give us. But uh, I think that the Either plan A or plan B is so broad that I, I, I'm concerned that it would not uh, get anywhere in the legislature. And so I'm in favor of the uh, language as proposed by, uh, by the city attorney. Um, plan C, so to speak. Plan C, yes. Looks like yesterday. Uh, Glenn and Rosie? Uh, uh, I would uh, go along with what Jack just said. I think that that's more or less where I am as well. Um, and I also think that uh, I would add to that that I think it's uh, a much clearer uh, ask of the voters um, that the, the language, uh, as most recently drafted, um, makes it very clear, I think, what Montpelier voters would be asked to consider. Uh, either of the two previous versions felt to me uh, difficult to understand, difficult to, to, to grasp the scope of the, uh, the proposal. So uh, I'd, I'd go along with that. And, and I also kind of for, for the sake of that, I, I want to read out the current language because I'm not totally sure that it is fully available to, to everyone listening or, or reading. So, and it's brief. Um, the, the relevant language uh, is under 
Section 5-301, Powers and Duties of City Council uh, Number 9, um, regulate, license, tax, or prohibit within the boundaries of the city point of sale distribution of non-reusable plastic bags, non-reusable plastic straws, and similar plastic products that are not reusable, and to define what constitutes reusable in this context. Thanks for reading that out. Ah, Rosie. Um, so I am most comfortable with uh, version C, um, and that's kind of the pragmatic, you know, this has got to go through the legislature, and um, given our past history of charter changes with the legislature, um, you know, they could just sit on it uh, if they don't like it. Um, and so I think this is very clear. This is what we intend to do. This is the power that we need to do this specific thing that we intend to do. Um, and I don't think that there's anything objectionable. It's very straightforward. Um, and so I'm very hopeful that we wouldn't have a problem quickly getting this through the legislature. Um, and this is something that it feels like the council would like to act with some urgency on. So um, I'm, I'm uh, good with version C. I did want to note um, that my colleague in District 1, uh, Councillor Bate, um, sent some comments. Um, she is concerned about the term non-reusable um, and finds it a little bit confusing. Um, so we may want to have a little bit of discussion about that. Um, and she just wanted to reiterate that um, she had actually a preference for the, the broader language that we considered earlier, um, but understood that she probably wasn't in the, the majority on that, but just wanted to reiterate that. So I wanted to share her comments because she's not here tonight. Thank you. Uh, Jack. I agree with the concern about uh, non-reusable and how do we figure out what that means. But part of the language does say that we would have the authority to define what constitutes reusable. So I think if we adopt this, then when it comes back to us as a charter change and we're working on uh, adopting the ordinance, we this gives us enough authority to consider how to, how to do that decision. So having said that, I move where we already passed something, so we have to amend, move to amend that, or? I think that's the case, yeah. Mm -hmm. I move the, to, to amend the uh, uh, proposed uh, charter change to uh, adopt the language proposed by uh, uh, Joseph McLean as, uh, as read by, uh, by Glenn just a few minutes ago. I second that. Okay. Um, but I would also note, Jack, that there were a couple of additional minor insertions that Glenn didn't read, so we want to have the full text included. And that's part of that, too, yes, part of my motion, too. And those are... Yeah, go ahead. Should I read them? Yeah, too? yeah, that's the, just for completion. <clears throat> those would be changes to 5301AB... Um, Two, capital B, uh, regulation or prohibition of any condition, activity, public nuisance, or matter concerning promotion of public health, safety, and welfare as permitted by the general law of this state. And the language added would be, or this chapter. And subsection C, also adding the words, or this chapter. Great, thank you. Uh, further things? Public comment. Yeah. Too. Um, cool. Should we go public and then back to council comments? Unless you wanted to. I'm not sure how it worked procedurally or if Jack would consider it a friendly amendment. I, I would like to strike the word tax oh, okay. um, in section 9. I don't think, strictly speaking, parliamentary law re allows for friendly amendments. I think it's just an amendment. <laughs> once, once, a once a motion is made, it belongs to the whole body, not just to the maker. Can we hold off on that for right <coughs> for now? Can, of course. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll come back to that thought. The public, go ahead. My name is Joe Yoder. I, I'm a resident of Montpelier, and I'm in a, an organization called Citizens Against Plastic Pollution. Uh, I, I felt like I had to step up because you're getting ready to vote on something, a language change, and uh, nobody's had a chance to speak yet. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I'm a little confused about uh, A, B, and C, and... The but, choices. but I'll tell you, our interest, our group is, is that it, it have language to ban uh, single-use plastic in it. Uh, my, I got the sense that you were talking about maybe 
turning towards energy efficiency, and we, we wouldn't be supportive of that, our group. I mean, it, it's the, the idea is to, to really do something about this plastic waste. I, uh, I, I think everybody in our group, the more we study it, the more we see it's, it's like a plastic apocalypse on the horizon. It's, and it would be nice if the capital of Vermont could uh, set a good example and do something about it. So whichever one of these, A, B, and C, actually includes the language to ban single-use plastic, uh, we're strongly in favor of. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I, I believe you'd, that, that would be most closely associated with option C, which is what Jack proposed. <laughs> to, to be clear, though, the intention of, of A, B, and C was to do just that. It, it was just a question about how it was worded, yes. whether it would give us more authority to regulate other things as a municipality, not just plastic bags. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Further comments? Okay. Uh, all right, so, Connor, did you have a... I need some help, huh? <laughs> <laughs> should should yes. we vote first on the um, amendment and then, Connor, you might further amend? That works. Huh? I, well, actually, if he's amending the amendment, once you vote on the amendment, well, I suppose Isn't you could amend it and then he re -amend. could amend it again. Isn't it like he's got to propose the amendment, someone's got to second the amendment, and then we vote on the amendment? Right. And then we vote, and on, then we vote on the whole thing, okay. right? Did you so I think we have a motion on a second, right? Do we have a... Yes. To, yes. To, we have a to substitute this for the, for the prior version. Right. Oh, did and then Connor, your was that an official, was that a motion? No. no. Just, so just you, to, Connor hasn't... <laughs> yeah, just move to... Connor hasn't made I, his amendment quite So yet. I would move to amend... The amendment to strike the word tax in section nine. Is there a second? I guess I'll second it for the purposes of discussion. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the comments on do we add the word tax or not? Um, Go ahead. So I don't feel particularly strongly, you know, the initial idea that we, you know, ban plastic bags didn't come from me and so I am open to how the rest of the council would like to do that. Um, so if it's the way you would, if you don't need this for the way you would like to do that, then I'm happy to get rid of it, I guess. Uh, Jack, and then. In your discussions with our attorney, uh, did he make it clear that even amending the uh, charter to give the city the authority to tax would be enough to force that to go before uh, the money committees? Yes. So uh, just to explain that a little further, uh, normally charter changes have to go before gov ops, uh, but- Government operations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but uh, if it also has to do with um, taxes or fees, then it also has to go, it's either before ways or means or appropriations. Wins. Oh, he knows. And finance. And finance in the and Senate. And finance. Wait, both? Oh, yeah. And the well, Senate. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay. So much to learn there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it would be extra committees that would need to approve it. Yes. Connor, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, just uh, so a little background uh, data myself here. Uh, I worked on this issue about 12 years ago. And there was a bill at the State House that would uh, create a five cent bag, uh, five cent tax per plastic bag. Uh, the Douglas administration testified in opposition to that um, and used the full weight of the Department of Taxes to come in and complicate the issue. Uh, so it was bloodied beyond repair and didn't have a chance of passing by the end of the legislative session. I worry this is a technique that could be uh, brought into play in this case as well. Uh, I believe the simpler the better. And again, I want to ban plastic bags, not tax them. Okay. Uh, Glenn. Um, if we take out the word tax from the amendment, it then says regulate, license, or prohibit within the boundaries of the city, et cetera. Uh, it seems to me that we have uh, all the authority that we would want with that language. Regulate seems quite broad. Prohibit seems quite definite. Uh, so I think given Connor's evidence of trouble with, with uh, tax language, I'd, I'd support his amendment to the amendment. 
I don't have strong feelings about this. Um, okay. Uh, any further conversation about this? Any thoughts from the public on whether we should include this? No? Okay. We should take out the word tax to save the committee. Uh, further conversation? No? Okay. Um, we're voting now on the amendment to include, to strike the word tax. That's what we're voting on presently. Um, so, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, so now on to the... Now it's the, the original. Jackson, the original amendment. Um, further conversation about that? So, I just want to be... Clear. Okay. I'm going to vote in favor of this, but I think that as a community, we need to do more in, in terms of what we are doing to become net zero by 2030. So I support this, um, but I don't want this to sort of be the, the thing that lulls us into complacency. Um, might I suggest that we also make another motion after this that might recommend that uh, we ask city staff to look into creating further charter change language regarding energy efficiency. I'm just going to put that out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't make that motion. So, did you have a question? No, I was going to okay. add one more comment to yep. make, which is I note that uh, plastic straws are included in this charter charter change. I know that I came in. I came in here many times saying, well, straws have to be part of it, but. It's also very clear that uh, the use of straws is uh, is important for some people with uh, with medical conditions and disabilities. So we can't just uh, ban them uh, humanely, but but I think that we can uh, use this to regulate uh, straws in, in, and not just ban them. Okay. Great. Rosie, did you have something? Or no? Okay. For the discussion, yes. I guess I just want to point out, and I sort of thought about the same thing, Jack, but I would envision that there would be some committee work around this to identify those sorts of situations where we would need to, to kind of craft our ordinances such that, you know, that it's still an option. We just have to bring everyone into the conversation to get it right. Mm -hmm. Cool. For the conversation. Okay. Um, voting on Jack's amendment. Uh, okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Um, would anybody like to make a further motion? I guess I have a question about how we envision this working. Do we move all four at once, or do we move each one individually? I was thinking about energy efficiency. Oh, <laughs> I would move that then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. I would I would move that the council direct city staff to start looking at um, potential charter change language to allow us as a municipality to implement uh, energy efficiency uh, ordinances and regulations in our community. Great, Jack. Second. <laughs> yes. Um, would you be receptive to put a date on it so that it would be ready to go to the uh, city me meeting ballot? Uh, in March. Absolutely. I thought that was what you meant. Yes. Um, I don't know that we need to necessarily include that in the motion, but um, yes. do city you, staff knows. Yeah. I mean, can we aim for like December, January? Well, you, if you if we you're have, have it stuff. on the March ballot, we'd probably have to file the language. I think by end of it's either end of December, early January. Yeah. So I think if we get it by like mid to late November, early December, then. Okay. Hopefully that's doable. Do the best we can. Okay, great. We'll we'll go with that. Uh, okay. Do we have to vote on that motion? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I got a flu shot today. <laughs> a little punchy. Um, <laughs> so I, I guess I have a question before we do that. Um, I thought I had understood that we were checking with a lawyer to see if we even needed to do a charter change to do some of the energy efficiency work that the mayor was envisioning. Yeah. So. I mean, if we find out that we do, then sure, I'm happy to support a motion to do to have city staff do that. But it seems a little I'm premature. I'm quite sure I heard the motion say to research whether one was needed and if such to present one. That's <laughs> certain that's what Councilmember Hill said. I'm certain that that's okay. I think that's, I, thank you. That's great clarity. I envision that as being rolled into that conversation. Thank right. you. Great. Okay. Further conversation? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Okay, so now um, 
we are at the point of uh, setting the date for and time for the special uh, city meeting, which uh, would be November 6th. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. At City Hall. Do you need a motion? Yeah, I do. So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. I don't know that I closed the public hearing <laughs> on the last one. Right. You did not. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> okay. Keep it together. Here we go. Okay. Set the date and time. Um, we're going to... Um, Close the public hearing on all of these. Is that yeah. how this goes? Yes. What so is you've had the public hearing on each item. Difficult. Now you now you, I know it's repetitive, but now you have to have a public hearing on the proposed warning, which is all four of those items. Okay. With the fourth one having been amended, just now. Okay. So we're going to open that public hearing basically on all of them. Well, the, in the wording and, and the word right in the wording, especially that we we just passed. So. I yes. had I realized I had jotted down a question on wastewater recovery facility, a minor one that I did not bring up during that one. So, um, <laughs> and it was just I know we'd had a lot of discussions about guarantee whether or not to get a loan guarantee or not, and I couldn't remember where we ended up on that in terms of whether the the dollar the cost to get the loan guarantee did we need to borrow that or is that just going to come out of general fund? Like, does that we hadn't made a decision whether or not to do. I mean the bond, the the, the surety bond, the surety, surety bond. bond. That's yes. I'm sorry. That's, that's what I meant. Two thousand dollars or so. So we'll just take that out of general fund. That That'll doesn't. Yeah. Need to be that included. doesn't need. Great. <laughs> or it'll be yeah. in the sixteen point seven five million. Perfect. Great question. <laughs> okay. Further uh, comments, questions, anything from the public? Okay. Just one little. A uh, bit of information that might be helpful. Uh, we, we've been looking at laws that worked for uh, banning plastic in other towns and other places. And one one thing we came across was a town that said that they needed to define what's non-reusable, and their definition I think was under four milli millimeters. Uh, so th the thickness is one way to define non-reusables. Mm -hmm. Great. Be looked at. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, if if new information comes up in the context of traffic study, the renderings turned out to have been inaccurate, what provision do we have to get that information out objectively, not by a cheerleader, you know, uh, point of view, to the voters in time to basically correct a course correction for where, where we're at on the track we're on right now? I I would assume that if we got any new information, that we would um, provide that to the to the media, and it'd be available on the city web website. Yeah. So any anything would be released, as well as of course the permit process, and if there were some, uh, obviously the council is going to approve a, a warning, but the council can also pull back an item if there were some drastic new information. So I mean, they they do have the right to cancel it. And do you know? I doubt, I'd, actually, though, I would say with three other items, it's probably unlikely to happen. But and do you know whether the detail requested in the traffic study includes the cumulative impact of three construction projects going on at once and the displacement of all that surface parking? Um, do you know, Sue? I don't know. It does not? DPW, DPW, DPW is running that show, so I don't know. We're, we're staying out of it. So whatever they believe is necessary. But you do bring up a good question. Question, which yep. is also to say that um, we have on our radar for some upcoming meeting a discussion of the short-term uh, Park. parking. Um, it's not quite traffic, but at least mm -hmm. uh, in the interim between now and the time things are built, like what are we? What is our plan? So we're going to be talking about that further. So. The, the example that brought this to mind was trying to get with the Taylor Street Bridge closed, uh, State and Main. I mean Main and Memorial a little were up. gridlocked this afternoon and that light is not uh, sensor timed uh, so three or four people get through and you can sit through three or four cycles of the intersection yeah thank you yeah, thank you okay uh, any further comments from the public no okay we're gonna officially close the, the public hearing on the warning of the um, ballot and just to be clear uh, article it is four 
uh, is the amended language. So it's not as it appears on the agenda for anyone following along with us at home, but yes. it's the new language, which I hope we can get up and out ASAP. Great. Minus tax. Yes, minus the word tax. Okay. And so now I think we're approving the warning. Yes, so you'll be so we need a motion to approve for that. the motion okay. with all four items on it. I move that we approve the warning uh, with all four items on it with the language is uh, suggested by city staff except. In, except for item number four, which was amended this evening. Second. Further conversation? Further discussion? Yes. I just yes. want to make clear that I will be supporting uh, the, the warning as it is, but I am not supportive of Article 1. And I just want to make clear for anybody who is paying attention that um, I am voting yes, but we have to vote yes. It's, it's in essence a vote on all four items, not individual items. And one is the parking garage. And one is the parking one. garage. One is the parking garage. Two uh, is the water resource recovery facility. Three is the non-citizen uh, legal resident uh, voter registration for city ballot items. And then uh, four is the plastic bag ban. Great. OK. Uh, did we, we did just have a motion. Yes. Did we have a second? Yes. OK, great. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Okay. Do we have to close that? Oh, um, that, was that wasn't a public that was hearing. Okay. That was just a... You now officially set a special right. city election for yes. November 6th with those four ballot items. Right. Okay. We don't have any other business. Um, uh, but council reports. Um, actually, Connor, I'm going to start with you. Um, yeah, sure. So I think we could get into it a little bit more next meeting. Um, there's a company called The Bird and they function in um, many cities across America, uh, similar to a bike share program, but um, different in the sense that it's a two-wheel scooter. Um, it is placed in what's called the bird's nest at different points in a city. Um, somebody can take an app on their phone and activate the bird scooter, uh, which goes about 15 miles an hour um, and runs for 20 hours on a charge. Uh, it's 15 cents a minute to operate this, um, and I believe it could potentially be helpful in meeting our goals to reduce our carbon footprint um, and reduce congestion downtown. So I had a, had a representative from the company come and uh, just had sort of informal <coughs> discussions. Uh, they did bring a bird around, which uh, some members of the police department uh, rode around in the driveway behind the city hall here. Um, and the, the company would be open to having a, a pilot project for just several weeks to see if it would be a good fit for Montpelier. Uh, certainly, um, questions that would be asked right off the bat, is this uh, you know, conducive with the weather in Montpelier? It mostly operates in places like San Francisco. Uh, would it be used? You know? um, so I, I, I think there are a lot of questions. I think it's worth exploring, and I, I would certainly ask the company to come in and talk about it with the council. Uh, potentially as early as our next meeting there. Uh, but I, I do think it is something worth exploring. I don't, I don't think there's any action needed by the council on this. Uh, but I also think if we found it was not a good fit, we could probably preclude this from happening. Um, so again, just sort of floating a test balloon here. Uh, and would love to hear more from them at the next council meeting if they would come up and present there. So that's one thing. Rest of my council report, I had a great uh, stay with the fire department on Saturday night there. Uh, some city employees have a restraining order against me now because I've been shadowing them quite a bit the last couple weeks. <laughs> uh, but really want to thank, um, you know, of course, the chief, uh, Leon, um, and Luke, and, uh, oh, geez, I'm spacing, Jake, uh, who let me hang out with them for a night there uh, for about eight hours, flew down the pole again. Uh, there wasn't much action that night, thankfully, uh, but they, they're, they're so selfless, and they, they, you know, you could see them texting their families. They take so much time away from their families for these 24-hour shifts, uh, which take a toll on them, but they do it for the safety of the city, and really my gratitude to the department, and would encourage anybody to stay overnight. You can ride the boat. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Go ahead, um, so, uh, first, I want to... Uh, 
say that I was very pleased tonight to, to uh, see that we deep in the consent agenda we approved the purchase of an articulated wheel loader uh, I believe uh, which is the first public vote I've taken that my four-year-old on Monday nephew is going to be really happy about <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, see if I can get a picture of that articulated wheel loader to send to him for his birthday card bought it for you um, there's a couple of things uh, happening tomorrow and Friday that I wish I could uh, go along on, but I can't. Uh, it is We Walk Week, uh, and Harris Webster is uh, leading a couple of tours. He has been all week, uh, and I think they must be great. Uh, I haven't been able to go to them because I'm at work. Uh, tomorrow, the 4th, um, at 3 p.m., uh, meet at the Triangle South and across from the Granite Street Bridge on Berlin Street. Bring water. It will be about an hour and uh, 15 minute walk. Gems of southeastern Montpelier. Um, and please go and, and take my place there because I won't be able to be there. On Friday, a similar walk. Uh, Gems of southwestern Montpelier meeting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, in the parking area north of Derby Street and south of Econo Lodge on Northfield Street. Again, bring a bottle of water. Uh, and finally, uh, if you want to talk to me about anything at all, I will be at Baguito's tomorrow morning from 8.30 to 9.30 as usual. Uh, looking forward. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Who would like to start? I'll go. Go ahead. Uh, so this afternoon was the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, platform meeting, which I attended. Um, I would strongly encourage anyone who's interested to get involved. Um, it was an interesting experience. Um, we did, I raised the issues that we had all discussed last week. We did get a few of them changed. Um, the exemption for uh, religious organizations that receive state and municipal funding were removed from one of the sections. Uh, there were a few public safety measures that were approved. Um, but I, I would really encourage, um, I would encourage people to, to step up and get involved. Um, I, I think as a, as a member, um, municipality, um, I, I would like us to be better represented in the group. So I think that the more that we can do to step up and get involved would be great. I'm one of the uh, people who had an opportunity to ride one of the bird scooters last week. Um, I've been eagerly watching the city webpage for the, uh, for the videos of the mayor, chief of police, uh, <laughs> city manager, assistant city manager, and various other people uh, riding them. I think that uh, it, it was you know, kind of an exciting and, and fun thing, but I would also say that uh, there, there are real questions, including safety and other issues. Uh, if you Google bird scooters, you'll see all kinds of stories in newspapers from across the country about negative impacts on the on the communities they're in. So I, I think it requires some study. And so I, I'm interested in continuing the conversation. That's all I've got. You were like popping wheelies, though, Jack. <laughs> As I say, it was fun, but. Uh, <laughs> Safety no. first, Jack. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm you were wearing a helmet. <laughs> Only one person was wearing a helmet. That was uh, Corporal from the uh, from the police department. Uh, the Bill rest Brick of us. safety first. That's right. The rest of us were not wearing our helmets. So, although he did offer, the mayor was particularly adept at this. <laughs> it was fun. It was very fun. And we do have video. <laughs> I don't have anything to report this week. Oh, could I say one other yeah, thing? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, we've been through a long process on this parking garage, and it is, uh, it's obviously not over yet, but I think that uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a good thing to see, especially as the, as the design has, uh, has gone forward and been, uh, been discussed. There's been a lot of public com comments, and... Uh, a lot of uh, comments from the public have been reflected in changes to the design, and I think that 
that's probably going to continue even more as it goes through the permitting process. Okay, um, so I just have a couple things. Um, I went to a really great workshop on, I think it was Friday of last week, um, about how biodiesel can be used as a home heating fuel. I was unaware of that uh, previously. So um, if people are, are interested, um, what should they do? They should probably um, get in touch with Black Bear Biodiesel, because um, apparently a lot of the um, uh, fuel that they sell does actually end up going to home heating. Um, so as people are looking for ways to make their um, their homes uh, or businesses uh, more net zero, um, all that is all sourced from restaurants around. So, you know, someone's going to use it, so it might as well be you. Just, just saying. I'm going to put that out there. Um, all right. So uh, that's one thing. Second thing, we have our budget conversations coming up, and... Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know what I'm going to say. Um, there's this budget survey out there, and we would I would love to get more responses from people on um, you know thinking about what you want in that budget. So uh, take a little time, carve it out, make it make it happen. We have two hours available tonight. That's right. <laughs> We're done early. Um, so right now we've only gotten You're two responses, and one tonight? of them is from me. Oh no, I'm suggesting we go home and fill out the <laughs> survey. <laughs> Todd's still here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So anyway, um, so please take a minute and do those. It helps frame our discussion. So especially, you know, knowing what you want before you've even necessarily talked to other people. So it's very helpful. Uh, okay, that's it for me. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself or, or? Sure. Hi, I'm Sheila. I'm the new uh, deputy city clerk. Um, it's nice to meet you all. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nothing else to add, I assume? No, okay. that's it. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't really have anything either. Well, obviously, we've got another agenda. I will say that uh, Councilmember Hill uh, represented the city quite effectively this afternoon, and <laughs> certainly um, people know Montpelier is on the map now. <laughs> they didn't before. Y'all told um, me to be loud. Um, yeah. yeah. And I would say, with regard to Vermont League of Cities and Towns, certainly echo um, that being involved in that organization is a good thing, although I would note that your city manager is on the board of directors of that organization, so the city does have some involvement in, in that organization. And actually, Bill deserves a shout out today. He made the last point. There was a, a floor um, motion for a resolution to uh, address uh, the issue of slavery in the Vermont Constitution, and Bill had the last comment, which um, I was so proud to call Bill our city manager and a friend, um, and he, uh, I think, really sort of swayed a lot of folks in the room uh, to do the right thing, or what, in my estimation, was the right thing, so I think Bill deserves some acknowledgement okay. for that. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so no nothing further, eh? Uh, all right, so um, without objection, we're going to adjourn at... Uh, 8.14. Yay. Phew.